Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Grace and peace be with you. It's lovely to see you all today. We're gathered here to be together and to worship God. And it's wonderful to have some children with us today. And uh, we will begin with our time with the children after this be called to worship. So let's listen for these words. Come and see, Jesus is here. Come, join in with his disciples. Meet and work and play together. Come, feel their pain at his loss and their confusion at his resurrection. Come as you are and offer this time to God. Do not be afraid, for God is here. We're going to sing together. He's got the whole world in his hands. Does it just appear? You put, put it in a basket. Like this basket, maybe? Yeah. It comes from animals. It comes from animals. Fish. Fish. Meat. Plants. Yeah. Potatoes. It does. Now, what do you need for the picnic? A rock in a massive open space. Right, okay. Here we go. Here's, here's our tatty old picnic mat. Look at this. It's been well, very well used, well worn. Does anybody want to come and sit on the mat? Okay, and we've got some sun cream in case it gets hot. <laughs> yeah, and we've got sun hat in case the sun comes out <laughs> and we've got some pictures of food some we've got some grapes here now you can pass them around you can help yourself to some grapes make sure you bite them first because i haven't cut them in half they will end up with swallow the grapes so can i but can i tell you a story can i tell you a story about a picnic in the bible Help like yourself to grape. Can I tell you a story about a picnic in the Bible? It was just after Jesus had risen from the dead and 
his friends were a bit wondering what had happened and Peter decided he was going to go and do something because he was a fisherman so he decided he was going to go fishing fishing there you go we've got a pic we've got a picture here and they fished all night and they looked everywhere for fish but what did they catch they caught nothing nothing and then they heard a voice that they recognized on the seashore and the voice said throw your net over the other side and try so they did that and do you know what happened they caught fish, they caught fish. This, person, this person must have known where the fish were let's have a look at the next picture up here i need to be for the people watching from home we're live streaming this service hi everyone from home Sorry if I forget to change the position of the picture, but this is now up on the screen. So Robert, have we got another picture of the net just about bursting because there were so many fish in them that was amazing. So that, that's the story of when Jesus appeared to his disciples, his friends, and he was on the beach and he decided that they should join him and have a picnic. So he said, come and join with me and have a picnic. So let's see, there's another picture here. And they sat around, they had some fish and some bread. And they probably didn't have grapes, but well, we've got grapes instead, just, just, just to pretend. So that, that's the story that we're thinking, one of the stories we're thinking about today. And then in the conversation with Jesus and his friends, he said, follow me, come and follow me. So who wants to follow Jesus? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's a good thing to do. So maybe as you go to energy today, you carry on thinking about these things, you think we can think about, well, what does it mean and what does it look like to follow Jesus? So will we have a wee prayer? Let's have a wee prayer. Let's pray together. God, thank you that you know all things, even where to find fish. Fish? Help us to love you and to love each other and to follow you always. Amen. Amen. So have a great time at Energy. You can take the grapes with you if you like. And we look forward to having a picnic another time together. Okay? Janice is going to come and read to us from Acts chapter 9. My first reading this morning is from the book of Acts chapter 9, reading from verses 1 to 20. Hear the word of the Lord. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men travelling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. 
Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord, Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. And our next worship song is Because He Lives.
Our second reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 21, reading from verse 1 to 19. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, do you know that I love you? Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, Do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I tell you the truth, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Thanks be to God for this reading from his holy word. Amen. Psalm 30 says, I will exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord, my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit. Sing the praises of the Lord, you, his faithful people. Praise his holy name, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favour lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Let's pray together. Eternal God, we give thanks especially for the stories of Jesus, his birth, life, his death, and death's failure to hold or defeat him. We see you nowhere more clearly than in him, and we are awed and amazed that you, the mysterious energy of life, should know us human beings so well. We see that the God-man Jesus looked at people and saw right inside them, saw their strengths and weaknesses, their hopes and fears and hidden shame. 
He knew which ones needed comfort and reassurance. He knew who needed to be challenged and confronted if they were to change and grow. And if that was true then, it is true of us gathered here today. We confess our failings of the past, not because you do not know them, but because we need to face them in your presence if we are ever to put them behind us and move on. We listen for your voice, Lord, calling us to a life of costly discipleship and service. And with almost as much surprise, hear our own voices saying, yes, of course, we will follow if you will still have us. Who else knows us as you do? Who else loves us as you do? Who else can lead us safely through death into eternal life? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our risen Lord, in and through whose name we pray. Amen. Let's sing a song based on that second reading that Janice read, Lord, you have come to the seashore.
Let's pray together. Oh, thank you, Lord, that you draw near to us and teach us and inspire us through your presence in the Holy Spirit. Cast your light upon us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I wanted to say a word about last Sunday. From last Sunday, perhaps we were left with the question as to whether it's right to forgive or not to forgive. Remember the risen Jesus appeared to the disciples, breathed on them and sent them out with the authority to forgive sins or not, or not to forgive sins. I said it would be up to them. Perhaps I needed to say a little bit more about that. Perhaps in seeking an answer to the dilemma to forgive or not to forgive, we might ask ourselves the question, what would Jesus do? It seems from the scriptures that the answer to that is that Jesus seems always to choose to forgive. Among his his last words dying on the cross were words of a prayer, Father, forgive these criminals for they know not what they do. Even when it's tough to forgive, we can ask God our Father to do so. We see from today's readings that Peter and Paul were both recipients of God's forgiving love, as are we. As as Debbie Thomas puts it, (coughs) Peter's shame meets Jesus' disgrace and Jesus' disgrace grace wins. That's the gospel story in a nutshell. Jesus' grace wins. It seems an odd thing for Peter to have done. There he is, he's in the boat when suddenly he sees Jesus on the shore, realises it's him, and rather than strip off to enter the water, as we might imagine, he covers himself up. Verse 7 says, he wrapped his outer garment around him and jumped into the water. Why would he do that? Well, some have suggested that it was because Peter was ashamed. Ashamed of having denied Jesus. Ashamed of having run away when the heat was on. Ashamed at not having had more faith. Ashamed at not having shown the love he might have. We know that shame eats away at people. We've thought before about the difference between shame and guilt, but let me remind you of what Brenny Brown, the writer and researcher, says. She describes the difference as, shame is a focus on self, whereas guilt is a focus on behaviour. Shame says, I am bad. Guilt says, I did something bad. When we do something wrong, There's only one way to sort it, and that is to say sorry. In religious terms, it's to confess our wrong and to wait to be absolved. We might still be ashamed of what we've said or done or not said or not done, but in healthy relationships, shame is usually acknowledged and then spoken out, dealt with, so that it doesn't linger longer longer than is healthy. Brenny Brown claims that shame cannot survive being spoken, meaning that shame cannot survive the living word, and when shame encounters the God who is love, it burns to ash and scatters. It's so important, isn't it, to be able in a relationship to say aloud, or in prayer to God if that's not possible, I'm sorry I made a mistake, rather than I'm sorry I am a mistake. To say the latter leaves people bound in a state of shame. But we know it's not easy to acknowledge mistakes because it leaves us vulnerable. But this is the point, according to Brenny Brown, because she says vulnerability is the way back. In plunging into the water to run towards the risen Jesus, Peter was making himself vulnerable, open to ridicule, Here he was saying, I'm sorry I made a mistake. Will you let me try again? To which Jesus says, Peter, do you love me? But it's not just about messing up and making mistakes. That's not the only reason people can feel low. 
I was listening to a programme this week about suicide prevention, suicide being the biggest killer of under 35s in the UK. And they had several people on the show speaking about the importance of talking, talking therapy. Not that they used that term, but that's what they were talking about. You may have heard of the three dads who'd each lost a teenage daughter to suicide and who set up a charity called Papyrus, aiming to prevent suicide among young people. But one of the participants on the show underlined the importance of using the right kind of language, which might even be as simple as asking, how are you feeling? They were talking not just about suicide, but about any sort of low mood or depression to which can affect anyone. Paul said, We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. And we wait for it, hoping and with patience. We know things aren't perfect, but we, we wait for it, we hope for it, we groan towards it. These were words of the same Paul, who in a former life had persecuted the followers of Jesus, as we heard in our first reading, but who is picked out by God as God's chosen instrument to proclaim God's name, to speak out God's name, to model God's name, to preach that Jesus is the Son of God. How God of God to take that which curses and use it to bless. How transformative to take the instruments of death and turn them into life. The latest suicide prevention programme rollout this week has the slogan, to save a life, implying that you have it in you to save life. How true is that for those who see the risen Christ in everything? Christ who is everywhere and love which will make us whole. So let's go as Peter and Paul did and follow the risen Christ. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that as you chose Peter to follow you, as you chose Paul, you choose us too imperfect as we are but with your perfect love all things are possible and so send us forth fed by the body and blood of Christ to be your chosen instruments wherever you send us in Jesus name Amen we'll sing a song to a familiar tune it's Peter said I'm going fishing
Let's pray together. Dear God, hear our prayers as we pray for our fellowship, our communities, our country, and our world. We pray for our fellowship here in Kurt Newton and East Calder, and we give you thanks for your goodness to us. We give thanks for all those who have taken on tasks which enable our congregation to function efficiently. We give thanks that our finances are sound and that our buildings are in a good state of repair. We give thanks for the leadership of Alistair, our minister. We give thanks that we are able to worship here and celebrate communion here in safety without fear of persecution. Dear Lord, help us to be worthy of this bounty and help us to listen to your will for us. Take us, Lord, and use us, Lord, in your service. We commend to your care everybody in our wider congregation and parish, especially those who are facing illness, hardship, or challenges. We pray for all those in hospital, those recovering from illness, and those who sadly have ongoing health issues. We pray for our NHS and for all those dedicated people who work in it. Help our government to give them the resources required so that they can provide the service that they and us would prefer. We pray for all those struggling with financial problems and commend to your care all those organisations which try to help. And we pray that you will equip us to do whatever we can to help those in need. Whilst we give thanks that this country of ours is well off, democratic and stable, we are very conscious that many people are struggling financially and many feel excluded and ignored. Help our politicians to pursue policies which will allow everybody in this country to feel valued whilst getting the balance correct between all the conflicting views. Help our politicians to pursue policies which will narrow the gap between the privileged and the underprivileged and help us to do what we can to help <coughs> by at least trying to hold our elected representatives to account. <coughs> Dear God, you know all the troubled parts of the world, whether it be war, insurrection, poverty or hunger, much of the causes of these troubles can be laid at mankind's door. We pray especially at this time for the people of Ukraine. But help us not to forget the other humanitarian disasters which have fallen off our news, Yemen, Ethiopia, to mention but two. Speak to the leaders who can influence these situations, dear Lord, and guide them towards solutions which will permit ordinary people to live in peace. Finally, dear Lord, accept and bless these offerings of money which we give in love to further your kingdom here on earth. All these prayers we offer through and in the name of Jesus, our risen Saviour. Amen. come now to celebrate communion together, gathered round the table here in person and also at home. We remember the scripture that says this, Jesus said, all who eat my flesh and drink my blood remain in me and I in them. I am the true bread from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever and not die. This then is the table of the risen Lord, the risen Christ. His love has come among us to be here with us. Christ is our host. Come and share in the new life Christ brings. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. We're here because God in Christ invites us. Mark's Gospel tells us that on the night before he died, when darkness was beginning to fall, Jesus gathered around a table with his disciples in an upper room in Jerusalem. And as they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. 
Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, this is my body. And having taken a cup, he gave thanks and gave it to them, and they all drank of it, saying, This is my blood, the blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. So as Jesus did, so do we, as we take this bread and wine to be set apart for this holy and mysterious use. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10, Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all share this one loaf. Let's pray together. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of Christ God with us, present here in this sacrament of bread and wine. Loving God, we thank you for this new living covenant between you and all people, which is sealed to us by the living blood of Jesus, our brother and our friend, our saviour and our redeemer. Lord Jesus, we welcome you as host at the table. We acknowledge what you've done for us, how you have given your perfect life for our sake, how you have conquered death through your perfect obedience to God, and how you have been raised to new life, and in your rising, how you raise all who believe in you. Though we still taste death, we know that in you we have life everlasting. Send your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine, that we may know Christ's presence in increasing measure real and true, and be Christ's body alive in the world, transformed and sent out into the world as peacemakers, full of your light and love. Help us who recognise our Lord in the breaking of bread to see and serve him in all whose lives are broken. Give us who are fed at his hand grace to share this food with the hungry in body, mind and spirit. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ's victory is complete and we shall feast with all your saints in your eternal reign through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom all glory and honour are yours, loving Father and Holy Spirit, in the church now and forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus took bread And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant sealed by my blood. Drink from it, all of you. Friends, draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for you and his blood which is poured out for you and into you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who find refuge in him.
Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. We're no longer living in the kingdom of darkness for Jesus has called us into the light to live in the peaceable kingdom where he reigns as Prince of Peace forever. So in the name of Jesus and in his living presence, the peace of Christ be with you. Let's share with one another a symbol of that peace. We might not do it by touching, but we might uh, at least nod our heads to say the peace of Christ is with you. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Just before we finish uh, with our last hymn, a few notices to share. Um, Elizabeth, are you able to show just up on the screen? Just up upcoming times, we're continuing to alternate Sunday morning. So next Sunday, look forward to seeing you at Kirk Newton. And the Men's Fellowship uh, next Saturday on Zoom at 9 a.m. with Ken Mackay will be the speaker. The Guild, a week on Tuesday the 17th or was that two weeks on Tuesday the 17th and we're grateful to Elizabeth for taking on the mantle of organising the guild and keeping it going so well done Elizabeth you're, uh, you're uh, in everybody's good books for having done that so thank you for that and we wish you, wish you every blessing as you continue to do that uh, there's another table tennis session for those who are interested on Saturday the 7th of May, next Saturday, 4 till 5. I think that's all the notices to share with you today. Please join us for tea and coffee. If you can, here in the sanctuary immediately after the service, uh, thanks to Janice and Robert for organising that again. We'll finish by singing together, Will you come and follow me? Your eyes have seen God's love. Your souls and bodies have tasted it. Christ lives in you. 
Go then and serve the risen Lord with joy and gladness. The blessing of God be with you as you are the blessing of God in this world and in the age to come. Amen.